Hey everyone, it's the Unlikely Prepper here, and if you've been anywhere near a TV, a news station, a newspaper for the last 48 hours, you've been hearing a little something about a lady named Sandy. And uh, I'm in the direct way of her, uh, being that I'm in Massachusetts. And so I just watched a video of the Brooklyn Prepper. He's done two videos on prepping for Sandy. And he seems pretty well prepared for her. He says, you know, he's been prepping for her for the last 10 years. So I can't imagine he's going to have many problems. And hopefully by the time she's gotten up to Massachusetts, she's died down a little bit. But um, oddly enough, my whole area has already determined that we are pretty much like 99% chance we're going to lose power. So uh, yay for us. I'm not too worried about it. Um, I'm more prepared for Sandy than I was Irene, and Irene, we lost power for eight days. So, um, I haven't done anything really differently. I've actually done more than I did for Irene. So hopefully that, that says something. I'm trying. Um, got a few more batteries than I had last time, but I already had a package and a half to two packages of every type DC, um double-A AA and triple-A when that hit, and now we've got about two and a half to three packages of all of them. I'm lucky. My stove is gas-powered. My water heater is gas-powered. So while I was during the storm last time, I still had access to cooking on, on the stove and in inside the oven, and I was still able to take hot showers. I was still able to use hot water and, and use my water in general. So I'm not too worried about pouring off about, like, 50 gallons of water. Though I do have probably about 10 or 12 uh, gallons of water that I've prepared and put aside. I've got it all sitting in the, the tub. And uh, they're, in, they're in buckets. It's not just, like, sitting in the tub so in case, like, my cat jumps and it's contaminated or anything. Um, got plenty of food. I feel like I don't have as much. I feel... It's weird, I feel like I'm less prepared, even though I've done more preparing for it. So, maybe it's just because I'm, I'm kind of, not paranoid, because I know the power's going to come back on. Like, this isn't one of those kind of storms or anything like that. Um, I feel like, because I'm now part of, like, I'm in that prepping mind frame, I feel like there's so much more I could have done, because I know to what extent some people do. And for that, I feel like I'm not prepared. And the one thing that I wish I had, I don't have any type of generator. And my want, that's kind of like the one thing that I wish I had. Because when Irene hit last time, we had lost about $300 worth of meats in our freezer. And our freezer and fridge just never bounce back the same. And thus, they don't work that well. And my food is not kept that cold. And I'm a little nervous that this time, because I don't have a generator, A, I'm going to lose all that food again. Um, but because we haven't, our fridge hasn't worked the same, we haven't really been able to store food. So we don't really have all that much in the fridge and freezer. It's just kind of a pain in the neck to lose it again. My freezer is literally empty. There's absolutely nothing in there other than it's, it's holding some ice packs, but not really keeping them cold. But that's sort of just the ice pack storage area and the fridge holds a few things but I mean I can't even kill, keep mo milk in there for two days so I'm not that worried about it but we just gonna have to make sure that we cook up all the, the things that we have in there and get them out and get them eaten share them with neighbors if I have to and then move on to canned food and, and the dry food you know I I have ramen noodles on hand, I have mac and cheese, I have I have all those other things, I have plenty of canned goods and all that. I just, I don't know, I kind of wish I had that generator. Because then I wouldn't have to turn off, you know, I wouldn't lose my fridge and I wouldn't have to rush to eat about 25 pounds of food in two days. But I'm, I'm hoping I'm going to do alright. I'm going to have multiple video cameras charged up. I'm going to have my phone charged up. Luckily, you know, I can go ahead and charge my phone in the, the car if necessary so I'll try to take videos of everything as I go along and I will upload them 
I'll try to do the ones that I do on my phone onto YouTube instantly to update you. And you can see I'll I'll do video of the storm as it's happening. So you can see I'll do like a little tour of my neighborhood. Last time I had to help some of my neighbors with fixing up their yards. I've got a neighbor across the street that's 85. And I had to do some repairs on her place during the middle of Irene. Um... So I will try to keep you as updated possible, and then otherwise anything that's done on the cameras that I can't do, that I would need my computer for, I'll go ahead and I'll update those after the, you know, if I lose power when it comes back. So, Sandy's on her way, and I guess this is uh, my first prepping test. Let's see how I do, alright? You all have a great night. Be careful. If you're like me and you're in the path, start to be careful. I know around 6 a.m. is when we're going to start to see it here in Massachusetts. So I hope the Brooklyn Pepper is all all set. And I, I wish you all a very safe um, storm. And hopefully, for most of you, you're not even going to see this. You know, you'll, you'll be watching it on the news and not even get a gust of wind. So... Best of luck to everyone out there, and the unlikely prepper out.